This is the Honda Goldwing DCT and it's a fantastic touring motorcycle that offers comfort, tech and performance in abundance. But the price is substantial, it's 25 grand for this base Goldwing DCT and it rises up to over 32,000 pounds for the range topping Tour DCT. So if you're thinking of buying one, you're probably not doing it on a whim and you probably want to be sure. Now you see we've borrowed this one for the past couple of months from Honda and also a couple of years back I borrowed a Tour DCT and we've also trolled as many owners reviews as we can find online and so with all that in mind here are the seven key things that I think you need to know before you buy one. First up, if you've even got half an inkling to go and try one of these out at a dealer, but maybe you're a little bit cautious about the size of the thing, I say still go and do it. Yes, it's a big machine at 367 kilograms in this spec, and it goes up to over 380, I believe, in the Tour Edition, but the weight is so low slung that it really doesn't feel that hefty. If you take a look at a shot of the rolling chassis, you'll see that the engine is right down between the axles, and the fuel tank pretty much goes down under the seat so all of this stuff at the top is actually relatively lightweight and the real dense stuff is down between your legs it doesn't feel top heavy or tippy which makes it surprisingly easy to maneuver at low speeds if you're still a little concerned though i definitely recommend checking out the dct version which uses two sets of gears and two clutches to seamlessly shift on your behalf in its automatic setting no clutch no shifter pedal the gold wing just takes care of it all with the smoothest shifts in the business. Now you can also put it into manual mode, which allows you to choose the gears yourself through the plus and minus buttons on the switch gear. And so there's still plenty of entertainment on offer when the road allows for it. But for me, one of the most impressive features of the DCT system is the forward and back walking modes, which really do take the nerves out of parking it up. Some similar features I've used in the past use the starter motor in reverse to push the bike backwards. And while they do work, it can be a little unrefined. This walking mode though makes use of the automatic clutch and it feathers out just the right amount of power for a steady manageable creep and you can also use a little bit of brake to really smooth it out. For anyone slightly cautious about the size of this bike, this system is a massive help. Out on the road, this thing, for me, is super comfortable. The bars are raked back and wide, which gives you that sort of commanding feel. And these almost car-like folding wind mirrors actually give you quite a decent amount of wind protection on your hands. The seat is like a big tractor. It's generous in the width and it's cushy enough too. And the only problem for some riders, perhaps those considering a move over from an American brand, is that the flat six engine layout pretty much rules out the option of forward foot controls or highway pegs, aside for some slightly inelegant looking aftermarket options. Personally, I do prefer mid controls and they do keep your legs nice and toasty on a cooler day. But then again, I'm not particularly tall and so I don't really find there's a urgent need to stretch my legs out. Taller riders though, you might want a demo before you buy. I would also wholeheartedly recommend taking a look at this accessory tall touring windscreen, which also comes as part of the full accessory pack on this bike. It's monstrously tall and it provides, I think, more wind protection than any other motor cycle I've ridden. Absolutely fantastic on the motorway, keeps the weather off and keeps things impressively quiet. And then if you want to drop it down at lower speeds or to cool down in the wind, you've got the power adjustment with the button on the left switch gear to conveniently lower it without the indignity of having to reach forward. All in, if you like mid position controls and if you spec the tall screen, then this bike is ridiculously comfortable. Speaking of ridiculous comfort, I just want to give a massive shout out to today's video sponsor and that's flying eyes they make these awesome flexible glasses specifically for bikers and they can really help to reduce that temple pressure you can get from wearing regular frames under your lid especially on long rides with a touring bike like this i used to find that after an hour or two i get quite a headache from my normal glasses and that can become quite a distraction when you're riding but these super flexible resilamide frames are about a millimeter thick at the arms and so that means they slip easily between your head and helmet and they're 
are also so bendy that they just follow the contour of your head and really reduce that pressure inside the helmet. Plus they're super robust which is ideal if you're touring because you do often end up stuffing all your gear into a smaller than ideal bag and they've got a whole bunch of different styles and sizes and colors that should suit all tastes. I'm wearing their Ninox Narrow which I absolutely love wearing both on and off the bike. Plus if it's sunny you've got these awesome magnetic clip-ons that you can put on without even taking your helmet off and so these really are the ultimate glasses and sunglasses for bikers. Do check out the link in the description to get yours and you'll also find a discount code down there specifically for my viewers. So once again a massive thanks to Flying Eyes for their support and with that back to the bike. Now I've spoken a lot about comfort here but that's not to say that this is just a cumbersome and cushy bike this big 1.8 liter flat six engine is super smooth so it is brilliant for motorway cruising but it's also got stacks of torque and a decent amount of top end power don't be fooled by the dct though if you do test one out it does bias towards low revving efficiency and so you'll often find that it's seeking to get you up into fourth fifth or sixth gear you've really got to try it in sports mode where it'll hold on to the gears a lot longer or better still use the manual buttons and man listen to this bike sing it really is surprising how much it can transform it and it becomes like very lively and playful with that brilliant flat six soundtrack it is a big bike you can't get around that but it's also thoroughly entertaining and has an impressive kick now handling is also very impressive. For this generation, they gave it the double wishbone front end as opposed to a regular telescopic fork. And this does a great job of separating turning, braking and suspension duties so that steering still feels light and flickable despite the substantial overall size. Now braking is also very, very good. There's a pair of massive six pot calipers up front that have plenty enough power to haul it up pretty damn quick. And naturally it's super stable under braking being such a long bike. I'm also impressed with the link braking system which will give you a bit of both brakes whether you use the front brake lever or the brake pedal and it's done in the right way in that you barely notice it happening at all and yet it presumably shortens the total stopping distance. I think the super well thought out chassis and the way that the weight is distributed and the amount of shove on offer from the engine all combine for something that really does make for good fun through corners and in a way it convinces you that it's more lightweight than it actually is is until you occasionally leave the brake in a bit later than you're actually comfortable with and have to have a little word with yourself inside your lid. So all round a fantastic motorcycle, really an impressive feat from Honda, but are there any shortcomings? Well, maybe a couple. The fuel tank, for example, isn't humongous at 21.1 litres, especially for such a big engine. And so you might get a couple of hundred miles out of it if you ride steady, but if you throw in some quicker stuff, you're probably gonna get a bit less. There are other bikes on the market, like the BMW GS Adventure, that gets a 30 litre tank and a surprisingly efficient economy, perhaps owing to their shift cam variable valve system so perhaps you might want to look at something like that if you want to go for those more remote tours but realistically a couple of hundred miles on the wing is probably enough for most riders it's also worth mentioning that the 2018 version saw a bit of a shrink in luggage capacity versus the previous generation which i don't think was particularly popular with gold wing fans the good news though is that this was rectified in a 2021 update with an extra 11 liters in the top case to take it up to 61 and that makes the total luggage capacity a decent 121 litres. More importantly though, it means that the top case can more easily accommodate a couple of helmets, although you still might want to check your specific lid. But if you're looking to buy used and luggage capacity is key, then you may well want to stretch it to a 2021 and onwards model. Then there's the dash. I mean, we've got a wealth of riding modes and rider aids, and there's cruise control and hill hold control. And I love that you can get Apple CarPlay on the central TFT display here but the very basic riding information like speed and revs and gear position has all been pushed out to the edges of the cockpit and it makes it a little more tricky to see at a quick glance. Nowadays we're used to big central TFT displays on bikes that do both the infotainment and the key riding data and so perhaps this is one to be rectified in the next major gold wing update. But all that considered I still think this is a brilliant motorcycle and the fundamentals like the super smooth engine with its rich torque 
sturdiness, the super smooth DCT gearbox, the spacious and sustainable riding position and the surprising light footedness all combine to make this a large capacity tourer that few, if any, can match. But the price is admittedly a big barrier for most. You're looking at £25,249 for this base Goldwing DCT model, £29,349 for the tour model with the manual transmission, or 32449 for the range top in Tour DCT. I did, however, have a quick check on our partners over at Superbike Factory, and while most of their used stock is the previous pre-2018 generation, you do occasionally get one of this generation at a pretty good price, so it is always worth a quick check. As always, I'd love to know what you think of it, so do let me know down in the comments, especially from any owners who can let me know if I missed anything. If you'd like to see some of my other favourite new Hondas for this year, then I made a video at Motorcycle Live from their stand, which I'll put on the screen now so you can give it a click and give it a watch. Please do hit subscribe if you've not already to see more motorcycle reviews like this one. Many thanks for watching today, and we'll catch you next time.